Welcome. My name is Robin Hicks. I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Graduate Studies, and it's my pleasure to introduce the Dean's Lecture Series representative from the Faculty of Graduate Studies. I wish to acknowledge and respect the Lekwungen peoples on whose historical territory the University stands, and the Songhees, Esquimalt, and Wasanich peoples whose historical relationship with the land continues to this day. Today's speaker is Hong Lai Wei, who received his BSc and MSc degrees in Mechanical Engineering and Automatic Control from Northwestern Polytechnical University in Xi'an, China in 2014 and 2017, respectively. He's currently working towards his PhD degree in Mechanical Engineering at the University of Victoria, Canada. His current research interests include distributed model predictive control, multi-agent systems, and cooperative marine robots. He is an active reviewer for more than 10 international journals and conferences. Hang Lai's seminar today is titled A Distributed Control Strategy, Making Autonomous Surface Vehicle Platoons Safe and Fuel Efficient. Please enjoy. Uh, this is the Hong Lai Wei and the PhD candidate from Mechanical Engineering Department. And today I want to share our recent result. And uh, it's, uh, the title is A Distributed Predictive Control Strategy Make Autonomous Service Vehicle Platoon Safe and Fuel Efficient. Uh, I want to introduce this work from the five following aspects. The introduction and problem formulation the control strategy design, simulation result, and the conclusion. Let's start from the multi-agent system. So what is multi-agent system? So multi-agent system is a uh, other system that consists of multi-interacting dynamic unit. There are some uh, representative application, such as the connected vehicle, sensor network, and cooperative robot. And today we are going to talk about uh, a special connected vehicle is just an autonomous marine surface vehicle. And uh, let's, let's have a look at the connected vehicle platoon. So when we talk about the platoon, we just talk about a, a group of vehicles. They can travel very closely and they, they have the same speed, but the desired gap. But the, the whole vehicle platoon, they can travel at the same speed and very high speed. You know, just uh, imagine a, a group of vehicles travel high speed and they can break up simultaneously and also accelerate simultaneously, something like this. And uh, so it, it, we can, obviously we can, we can have a lot of advantage of when we study the vehicle platoon. Like, for example, we can save fuel uh, reduce the um, congestion and you increase the road, road capacity and we can also guarantee the safety. And so that's why we want to go to the surface vehicle platoon. So just inspired by the success of a connected vehicle platoon and we just want to extend this application from the ground to the marine. And so we aim to improve the efficiency of the waterborne transport and also reduce the labor cost. And uh, so uh, that's question come, how can we design the efficient and uh, uh, effective control strategy for the uh, autonomous motoring vehicle platoon? So let's go back to the uh, basic of the control. So when we, when we study the control, um, there are two units we will study. So the first is a dynamic system, like the vehicle we will study later. And uh, so we, we need to design the controller to control the system. So the question comes, uh, if we collect the data from the, uh, the vehicle, can we just uh, design strategy to, you know, to, to make sure the vehicle can be controlled um, with the guarantee of the safety and the fuel efficiency. So th that's the basic logic. Uh, when we have the data of the vehicle and we generate control input for the uh, dynamical system and the control it. So when we talk about the control system, there are lots of the performance we want to achieve. 
For example, we want to optimize the control performance. We want to guarantee the stability of the system and for the other safety. And uh, so like uh, the different vehicle may have the constraint. Uh, for example, the, the vehicle have the maximum speed. Um, if we want to just, uh, um, we, we, just we, we need to restrict the, uh, the velocity is below that, uh, uh, below in that constraint. And uh, so we, we also focus on the fuel efficiency and the lower labor cost. So when we design the control strategy, we just, uh, we just uh, not only to achieve a simple alternative, we, we just want to make a balance or trade off to make an optimal control strategy for the system we want to control. So I, in the following, I want to mention about the model predictive control. Uh, model predictive control is a, a optimization based control strategy. So here you can see uh, dynamical is we still want to control that, but the but the controller change. So we just formulate the control objective and the different constraint in the optimization problem. By solving such a uh, optimization problem, it can generate the safe and fuel efficient control input for the system. Like in this in this uh, research, it uh, generates the optimal control input for the vehicle system. So the feature is just that we can solve the optimization problem numerically. It means that. Uh, we can consider control performance for the vehicle, and we can also take in, uh, into account the uh, different uh, constraint, like the safety constraint, input constraint, and state constraints of the system. And uh, of course, uh, when we have the optimal control input for the system, we can optimize um, the energy efficiency we want. And uh, so there will be two types of coordination for the multi-agent system or the connected vehicle. The first is centralized control, and the second is distributed control. So when we talk about centralized control, it's just a control strategy. There will be powerful uh, unit or powerful computer. We can collect the information from each vehicle or each dynamical system. And, uh, and then we just uh, try to calculate the control inputs for all of them. But uh, this distributed control, we, we have a different controller. Maybe uh, each controller is smaller than the powerful one, but uh, the, the uh, powerful is distributed in several smaller controllers. So what, what, what we have when we decouple them to the smaller size controller, of course, we save a lot of computational uh, uh, results. And it, it, it can cooperate with each other and achieve the optimal uh, control performance we want. And uh, so for the vehicle platoon, and it's a, it's, as we mentioned earlier, it's a very typical uh, multi-agent system. So it's, uh, the, the research of the vehicle platoon starts in uh, 1990. And uh, so in the following, uh, 30 years, there are different control strategies have been developed for, to uh, achieve better uh, platoon control performance, like uh, the adaptive control, sliding mode control, and the optimal control. So, uh, but uh, model predictive control for the platoon control has received less um, research uh, attention. Um, you know, just the uh, uh, recent year, maybe um, five to seven years ago, and uh, uh, researchers in this, this area start to move on. And the why, uh, since MPC have uh, uh, the advantage of optimizing control performance and uh, handling constraint problem, so why we cannot use that to, for the pre tune control? And so, but in our work, we want to f make it a further step, we will just apply the MPC to solve the pro problem in the autonomous marine vehicle. So that's why we, we just want to uh, present the topic here today. And uh, so if we want to apply the MPC to, the, uh, to solve this problem, what there still existing a lot of challenge. So the first will be the computationally expensive. 
So it's, it means that, so uh, when we solving optimization problem, it uh, require a lot of uh, computational results from the computer. But, uh, but uh, how can we reduce the requirement of the computational result? And secondly, that when the, in, the, in the real world, and the, the vehicle, uh, ground vehicle or the marine vehicle always subject to the disturbance. The disturbance may be induced by the ocean current, wind, or the wave. So how can we design an effective controller to, you know, to rejection this disturbance? And the third, when, when the system subject to the constraint, like a state input and the safety constraint, how can we solve this problem? So in this problem, we just want to develop a computationally efficient control algorithm for the autonomous surface vehicle platoon. That's a, and the, with the aim of uh, addressing the uh, earlier mentioned uh, challenges. So uh, before we uh, before we present our problem, I just uh, uh, briefly introduce some graph uh, theory in notation. These graphs are used to describe the communication between the vehicle. Uh, like when their thyroid system, we just uh, uh, we, we rely on the communication between each of them. So like their two agents, they want to reach some uh, consensus. So like agent A should tell agent P what, should, what I will do, and agent B also tell agent A what uh, what I will do based on this information and they can make some kind of cooperation with each other. So here they come the graph notation. We just uh, use the uh, undirected graph to describe the communication network among the vehicle system. And uh, so the, we, I just give the uh, marine uh, autonomous surface vehicle modeling and uh, we use the uh, Ola Lagrangian system to describe the system. So the first is the uh, um, kinetic system model, and the second is the dynamic system model. Um, These param parameters mentioned in the equation are listed in the following table. And uh, here the UI is the control input for the, uh, for the vehicle, and WI is the disturbance. And, uh, so in the following, we will design uh, the control strategy. How can we generate a control input UI um, to make sure the, uh, the marine vehicle platoon is uh, fuel efficient and uh, safe uh, under the disturbance WI. And the, we just uh, further due to the symmetry structure of the uh, uh, surface vehicle platoon and uh, we we study the decoupled third dynamic of the AOV. AOV. Uh, so here I want to mention, because uh, we have uh, several surface vehicle, vehicles in this work, and each, view, each vehicle is uh, uh, indexed by I. I is, means that uh, the agent I or a vehicle I, that's the system. And we will design and control I for, to control that uh, vehicle I. And uh, so we provide the reference trajectory. And uh, so uh, just like, it's like when we, we, when we want to um, track an objective, like there the vehicle, we want to track this vehicle, we provide a feasible uh, reference trajectory. And then um, based on the reference trajectory, the vehicle can track this and uh, until finish the control objective. And uh, um, so further we give the error dynamics. So if we have the position of the vehicle and we have the reference, and then we can derive the dynamics model, like this is the error dynamics model. And uh, so, um, so in the prediction, I mean, in, when we formulate the model predict control, it's just that we based on the model and the predict the future and what will happen and, uh, and try to minimize or optimize control objective when we make a prediction. But uh, when we look at the future or look, uh, make some prediction, maybe we don't have the practical uh, disturbance. 
So in the nominal error dynamically here, we just ignore the disturbance in the prediction or in the, uh, so, so the, we give the nominal error dynamics here. And uh, of course, we give the control objective. So in this control objective, you want to make sure the vehicle can maintain a desired distance with each other and can also track the speed of the leading vehicle. So if we write in the mathematical um, language, it will be given like the following. And uh, we also want to achieve the safety. It means that uh, we want to make sure the vehicle can avoid the collision with each other. Just imagine if there are a group of vehicles travel on the road, they just uh, follow each other, right? When, the, when they travel together and the high speed or low speed brake or accelerate, we, we should make sure all the vehicle system is safety. So that's why we just want to make sure there will be a guarantee of the safety. So the basic idea is um, the, di the distance between the two vehicles, um, the distance is uh, uh, larger than the safety distance. So just uh, if the distance, we have a safety distance. If the, if the vehicle can guarantee the distance is always larger than this distance, of course the vehicle can stay safe, right? And uh, so we, we just give a control diagram so this uh, will be like there is three vehicle and uh, we design controller like the blue um, dash square is a controller, is a total controller for each vehicle. There are three vehicle and there will be three controllers. They just uh, distributed and uh, deployed on each vehicle. So there are no centralized controller like only one controller for the three vehicle. Of course, there are three distributed controller and each controller have two parts and one, one, part is, one part is generated by solving an op, uh, optimization problem. Another, is, uh, another part is gener generate, generated by uh, a pre-designed uh, control law. We just uh, call that ancillary controller in this work. And uh, so the robust DMPC scheme will include two parts. The first is UI star bar and second will be pi i. And uh, uh, when we want to achieve the uh, control objective, we design the objective function for the optimization problem. So in a mod optimization problem, we have the objective function, we also have the constraint. Here is the overall objective function. And uh, so the Li is the stage cost and Fi is the terminal cost. We can see the term of the Li here, and Zi is the uh, Ziq, the square, it will be the state cost, and the Ui is Ui, um, Ri is the control input cost. I just want to mention here, uh, Ui actually represents the uh, control input of the system, um, when we want to uh, realize our control objective, like uh, we start from one point A to another point B, we just drive from A to B, and if we just imagine if we use less control input, that, that actually imply we use less gas. So when we, we, when, we, uh, when we achieve the control objective by using the minimum control input, that means that we just uh, make, make use of the uh, energy better and it's, uh, it's become more efficient strategy actually here. And uh, here another two term and that will be used to minimize the relative the platoon error and uh, uh, penalize the deviation of the nominal state from the assumed nominal state. And uh, here we give the optimization problem. And uh, we can see we want to minimize the control objective function and but 
but objective functions are also subject to some different constraints of the system. They are include the control input constraint. So it it uh, represents the, uh, there will be a bond for the control input. Like, like a, a vehicle, there will be a, a maximum speed or the minimum speed, something like that. And of course, the second is a safety constraint. We want to make sure when we solving this problem, uh, the vehicle always stay in the safety state. So that, that means that we need a, a constraint here to ensure the safety. Of course, a lot of work, they just um, make sure uh, to guarantee the safety by design some cost-based uh, cost based function like uh, they, we can uh, we can put the term uh, in the cost objective cost function design when the uh, when 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 the car uh, collide with each other we just penalize and, and generate the high object uh, objective cost so it can also avoid the collision maybe but it's not a hard constraint it, it means that um, the collision may also occur, just not a 100% guarantee. So that's why we just uh, designed the safety constraint for the optimization problem. And uh, we also designed a compati compatibility constraint to make sure uh, the information uh, broadcast among the agents uh, just uh, stay in a division error um, bond. And uh, this uh, term cost is used, it, that will be used to guarantee the stability of the system. And uh, here I want to mention the safety constraint. So uh, it's the safety constraint here is like a, it's, it's like a filter. And uh, so there will be some, uh, if, if this is the set, I mean, uh, we can solve the optimization problem in this feedable set the square, I mean the gray, uh, gray square. And the, in, this in, this, in this set, there consists of some unsafe uh, region and also can see the blue, um, blue safety set. So when the, when the vehicle or the marine vehicle in the gray area, it means that the vehicle can um, cleat each other. But when the vehicle stay in the safety set, it means that the vehicle can always um, be guaranteed to stay safe. So this will be just like a filter when we design such a constraint in the optimization problem. We just uh, want to search out an optimal control input in the safety set to make sure um, the control input is optimal and also guarantee the safety of the vehicle. And uh, so uh, another uh, is the ancillary control law design. So in the previous control diagram, I mentioned that we have a two control term for the vehicle. The first is generated by, the, uh, by solving the optimization problem, a DMPC optimization problem. The second will be the pi i, we just call it ancillary control law. It means that uh, if we ha already have the, uh, the optimal control input, but in that optimization problem, we don't consider the disturbance. But in the practical world, we need to consider the disturbance. But how can we make sure the vehicle always stays safely when the, uh, when the, when the vehicle is subject to the disturbance? So that's why we need to design the ancillary control law. So the red line in the figure represent the uh, tra state trajectory uh, by solving the uh, optimization problem. That's only the nominal state. So the blue line represents the practical uh, state trajectory. So we need to design control law to make sure the blue line always stay nearby the red line. 
So that's why it come the ancillary control law. There will be control law to make sure the blue line always stay in a set you know, or, an, or, or we call that a neighborhood of the red line. And so in this story, we just design a pi i. So the control input for the pi i is the practical state and the nominal state. Based on this, the error of the two state, we designed the uh, anterior control of pi i and uh, to make sure um, the blue line always stay in the neighborhood or red line. And uh, so the next, we, I just want to briefly introduce the simulation study. So we, here in the simulation, we select actually seven vehicle, marine vehicle. We just, uh, the number is zero to, uh, zero to seven. And uh, so we give the parameter of the vehicle. And uh, so the desired trajectory here is the scenario uh, when, the, when, when the vehicle, when the lead vehicle travel in head of the whole vehicle system, and uh, it will um, accelerate suddenly, and then try to continue to travel at a constant speed, and then deaccelerate, and then something like that. It's just, a, it's just a, to model uh, acceleration and deacceleration process. And, uh, and in this process, how can we uh, guarantee the vehicle platoon uh, safe and uh, can achieve the control objective? And uh, we can see the, uh, the trajectory of the state and of, of the system. And, uh, and this is the control input for, the, for each vehicle. And of course, there are seven vehicles, right? And this is the error because when, when, the, when the system is subject to the disturbance, the nominal system states are, will never coincide with the uh, practical system state. But we can make sure by designing the enduring control law to make sure uh, the deviation between the nominal system state and uh, the practical system, they always stay in a bond. So like in this figure, the bond will be 0 0.2. We just make sure uh, the error always stay in this bond. So it's uh, to, by this way, we can verify the effectiveness of the proposed algorithm. And uh, so here I want to wrap up this work. And uh, so in this work, we um, propose a computationally efficient, uh, robust DMPC algorithm for the heterogeneous autonomous surface vehicle platoon, the platoon or the vehicle are subject to disturbance. And uh, by incor incorporating the safety constraint into the optimization problem, we, 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 we can further guarantee the inter-vehicle collision avoidance. And then in the future, we'll further study the scalable uh, distributed model predictive control for the marine vehicle, um, you know, for the formation control study and for the platoon control study. And then we also want to uh, design some distributed output feedback uh, model predictive control strategy for the autonomous surface vehicle and uh, with the connectiv uh, connectivity preservation. And uh, finally, I will um, give you the reference list here if you are interested in this topic and want to have a further uh, study or research in this area, you can refer to this um, reference, this literature here. If you have any question, you can email me and thank you.